Can you hear me, Sam? Yeah. Hello Longhorns fans and welcome to this season opener of the 2024-2025 Dever Longhorns season. To start off, we'll be playing our rivals, the Omega Raiders, in what is sure to be a good matchup. Compared to last year, the Dover Longhorns were able to take out the win, winning for the first time since two th beating La Mega for the first time since 2007. Tonight, for the starting lineup for the Longhorns, we have Kenley Beckman, Joy Caldwell, Riley Buck, Hadley Bryan, and Ashley Gomez. For the Raiders. Caldwell able to grab the tip for it to be immediately turned over. Travel will be called and the ball will go back to Longhorns. Foul called on Myers as the first team foul for Lomega. Buck with it, gives it to Brian. Brian able to get to Kinley after he gets tipped. Buck for three, starts the season. Good on the three. Buck, hot start to the season. Lomega with it, passing around. Travel holding on to the ball. Jump ball is called, and it'll be the Raiders ball. Passing around the Lady Raiders. with her first foul of the game. Still Raiders ball. Passing around. Still trying to find the open shot. Longhorns playing good defense so far. Passing around up top. Play Meyer, passing it. Goes for the three ball now, no good on the three. Mega able to get the turnover back. Caldwell gets her foul of the game. It'll be the second total for the Longhorns. Yeah. 
Buck with it, trying to pass it. Oh. Omega pressing, able to get a, another turnover on the Longhorns, making three in total for the night. Already in the first. And still only three to zero, the Longhorns leading. With 548 left to go. First personal foul, Buck 13 foul. Pass it to the corner. Horn still playing defense. Three pointer from the corner, no good. Able to get the offensive rebound. Another three, no good again. It's again, missed again on the three pointer. Passing around, Caldwell with it. Passing it back up to Buck, who's taken over the season so far as the point guard after the Harvestons have graduated last year. Both, both Riley Buck and Ashley Gomez were both two very important pieces to the state tournament team last year for the Longhorns. Foul is called, that'll be a substitution. That is Reagan Snowden will come in now. Going up for the shot, no good for Kenley Becker. Oddly with it. Good on the bucket there for the M1. We'll have a chance at a three-point play and tie the game up. Emerson Belt now comes in for Hadley Bryan. Mega pressing, almost able to get the turnover once again. Gives it to Beckman. Beckman loses it, and it's a, another turnover for the Longhorns. Timeout is called now. The Longhorns only down five to three with four four twenty six left to go in the first quarter. Well, yeah, and Sam, you can't really talk about Class B basketball in Oklahoma without having Omega in that conversation. You know, it's such a huge game. It's always the first game we have to start the season off with. You know, I don't know that, I don't know if it's just nerves or if it's just what, but I hope our girls can find, our, find their stride and really just, you know, come out and knock it behind and just do what they know how to do. I really hope so too. It's gonna to be a little bit hard this season without their two best scores from last year graduating. That's true. I mean, they've got some big shoes to fill, and they were matching shoes to, to go with that, but I think they're up for the challenge. We've got some new faces, and uh, we've really, I think they can really put something together. If they'll work, if they'll work I think they can do it. Sam gives them Beckman. Beckman on the fadeaway, no good. Shot goes up, no good. Good on that one there. Still struggling to keep stress. Caldwell able to get the ball back. Mez gives it to Buck. Buck going up strong, no good. Foul is called though, and she'll have some free throws. First person to foul on this. Buck to 
I mean, let's hope this goes well. I've seen her work on free throws in the gym every day after weightlifting. So let's hopefully she can put in the next one and uh, maybe shake off that first one. Yeah, I really need to make free throws in this game. The uh, Mega Raiders have a eight to three lead now. Good and the second second's one. good. So, you know, 50% is not bad at this point. Might go with it. Three-pointer from outside yeah. Yeah. for Aliot. Yeah, the Lady Longhorns really do have to figure out how to get that long game shut down because these Lady Raiders can come out and they can shoot from way deep. That curve line does not seem to bother them whatsoever. Yes, already as Omega's own Happy Ott has two threes already made. Shot from the elbow is no good by Reagan Snowden. Buck now, pass it in. Still trying to break the press, got to get it past half court soon. Time left, able to get the turnover, no good, but. Ooh, was that hey. foul on Ashley? Oh. Kate Myers now has two free throws after that. And actually, Gomez has two fouls. That's real early in the game. She better watch it or else she's going to have to sit for a little bit. Good on the second as well. Gomez gives it to Beckman. Beckman trying to find the open person. Finley with it, drives, three pointer. No good. Got the Houston rebound, though. Go up strong, no good on that put back shot. No shot goes up, no good. Time shot by Reagan Snowden again. We'll have free throws. Yeah, you've got two teams here, Sam, that are playing very athletic basketball. They're they're running, they're hustling. It's the first game of the season, so you know they've they've only been practicing for what the better part of a month. Yes, since uh, October first is when full practices work. Yeah, so you, so you've got these girls out here, and they're all every single all ten of them on the floor are hustling. Substitutions so. made for La Mega. Second free throw is good as well. <clears throat> so far, Riley Buck's been the only person that has scored for the Longhorns, having four of her points up on the board. Riley Buck taking a hard drive, but just kind of refusing to be denied. She ended up going down, but she had a look on her face that she was not going to be stopped. Uh, she's really going to have to step up this year, being generally the third one, third third scorer on the team. Yeah, she had some huge numbers in the Skelter the Skelter tournament, and even she had some numbers in the state tournament that were pretty impressive. Did really well as a spot up shooter. Now get there on the three point shot. Yeah, Buck played a lot off ball and was able to score a lot off the three-pointer, having her having the first 30-piece of the season for the Lady Longhorns last year in the Cimarron tournament. Yeah, when she heats up, she's uh, she's kind of unstoppable from out there. 143 left in the first. Shot goes up. No good by Buck. Yeah, Sam, I think it's important at this point to like to not let it come off the rails. I think to just play the game that you know how to play and not get in a hurry, not get, you know, not get flustered because that uh, that's that's when things kind of come off the rails. No good on the three by Kinley Becker. Yes. 
Good on the shot. Again, that's two of those starting five with two fouls at this point. Like, if uh, if they don't get that under wraps, they're going to be they could be in trouble by the time this game is over. Definitely could be, especially if you got two of your main scorers. Right. And especially your two main ball handlers. That's going to be even harder against this press, which has proven very well tonight. Yeah. Keeping the Longhorns to only four points. Okay, well, Rye is going to take her next attempt at the three at the free for, free throw line. Let's see if this one can come out better than half. It's four point seven seconds left on the clock after this. Okay, one away. One of one. And that's what you want to see when you go to the free throw line. Mega passing around right now, trying to find one open shot. I will say the long, the Lady Longhorns have done a really good job of keeping them from penetrating the lane and getting inside. They've had to shoot a lot of their stuff from outside. I was Fisher with those two points. Mega able to get Oh gosh. Tough collision out at midcourt by Brian. Looks like Presley Squires will be coming in now for the Longhorns. Third personal foul on the med. Wow, that's Ashley's third personal foul. And we're still, we're seven seconds till the end of the first quarter. So she gets to, uh, she's probably gonna get to take a sit for a little bit, I would imagine. Good on the first rebound, first free throw. Beckman with it, gives it to Belt. Belt, good! Okay. Hey. Now gives the Omega Raiders are up 23 to eight. Gonna have to see a really big push by the Trevor Longhorns in this second quarter. Yeah, and I think in the second quarter, the Lady Longhorns have to come out, and they've got to just play their game. They, you can see on their faces, they're frustrated, they're running hard, but, you know, it hasn't come off the rails yet. This is still a winnable game. They've just got to, like I said, they've got to calm down enough and play clean basketball enough because these Lady Raiders can put it in from the, from the free throw line. Yes, so, they can. So if you want to make them earn their points one at a time, they don't seem to have a problem doing that. Nine of the Raiders, nine of the Raiders' points so far in this first quarter were just off free throws. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, you're almost, like I said, you're almost, ha almost half the points that they've scored have come from the free throw line, and so, like I said, we're gonna have to figure out a way to uh, play a little bit cleaner so that we can, uh, like I said, not just kind of let it, let them take it from us. 
Coach Peck down there seems to be giving them a, a do better talk, I'm assuming. But it's also, this being the first game of the season, there's not a lot of scouting to be done. There's not a whole lot of information out there on either team that's, you know, current. You may have some scrimmage film that you may get to watch. But other than that, you're just kind of learning on the fly. Yeah, it's usually a little bit tough when it comes to uh, predicting the unpredictable in the very first game of the season. Caldwell gives to Gomez. Gomez for the three. No good on the three. Gomez's first shot attempt of the game. Listen, and that's one that if she heats up, she's. I've seen her go, you know, seven for seven from the three-point line. If she can get heated up. Beckman with it gets to Caldwell. Caldwell. Good pass there to Bell. Bell good on the two. Ball goes out of bounds and will stay Longhorn's ball. Back man with it. Trying to get past, able to. Goes up, pull up shot. No good. Mm. It was a good drive and a good attempt, but she seemed to kind of give up there at the end. She didn't make it. She didn't even go in for the rebound. Yeah, Kinley's got to really start using that backboard. It's yeah, it's almost, there. F it's there for a reason. Yes. Riley Buck has just fought for every inch of ground that she has gotten in this game. She seems to have dribbled through as many Lamega Raiders as she has around. Um, she's definitely not afraid of the contact, though. Yes. Raiders were definitely game planning. Uh, Buck, as a big contributor to this game, has been able to silence her for the most part. Having a yeah, they've cr they've cracked the code on that one. But I mean, you've got some you've got some freshmen out there that they've never seen before that uh, are putting some points on the board. Yeah. Mez, no good on three again. Going up, no good on the shot attempt. Good on the second, though. Joy Caldwell's back in the game, and she's another one that's not afraid to dribble through an opponent rather than around them. Emerson, was that her second foul? Yes, I believe so. Okay. She's another one that's new to this Longhorn team, but she seems to have found her spot. She seems to have been, she's absolutely contributing to the points that they've got so far. Um, yeah, she seems pretty at home out there. Yeah, she scored uh, four points now off 50%. Okay. Good on the first by Lawson. No good on the second though. And really, you have to hand it to the Lady Longhorns. Like they have had attack through the entire game. They have went for the ball. They're not. They're not giving stuff up. I mean, they're just like I said. They're just 
turnover on the Raiders. Jemez with it, goes up for the jump shot, no good as it's blocked. Yeah, they do seem to have cracked the code on Riley Buck, but I'm interested to see how she'll contribute to this game, even though she is covered so heavily. I hope they can figure out a way to make use of her while still, you know, while still having her in the game. Both teams fighting for the ball. Raiders able to get it. No good on the shot attempt. No good on the second either. Got that rebound, we're headed up the court. Buck for three, no good. Mez hesitates to shoot it, gets it to Buck. Pointers no good by Buck again. Oh. Short Caldwell took a pretty good hit on that one. Lost a shoe. Raiders with it. Goes out of bounds and goes back to the Longhorns. <laughs> Mez with it, gets to Belt. Belt goes up good on the two. Again, that play seems to be working really well for the Lady Longhorns. Um, they need to sit up and take note. What is that about the third time that that pass to belt underneath the baskets worked out for him? Yes. Mez with it, tries to find it. She tries to get through, but it's really hard to get through two <laughs> double coverage like that. Third person foul on the way, first team foul. Can lay with it, gets called well, called well. Foul's called on the floor. Second person foul on Myers. Second team foul. And for the Lady Rickards, number five, Jimmy Pinneran. Three-pointer by Buck. Good. That's got to feel good, Sam. She's 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 worked hard this entire game. She's been stopped a lot, but hopefully that will help her give her help her turn it around the right direction. Hopefully so. Three pointer by Ott, no good. Put back shot is good though. Caldwell able to get the rebound with a strong rebound. Oh. 
Sorry for the technical difficulties as we are back now. Third person to follow on the loss. And for Longhorn, number 13, Emerson Belt. For the Lady Raiders, number 15, Chloe Meyer. Number 21, Samantha Rivera. Caldwell gets it. Goes up strong. Oof. No good as the charge is called and the basket will not count. And that is four on Joy Caldwell. So, like I said, she's going to, I would imagine she's going to get to take a break for a little bit. You're correct as Brian comes in now. now has her third foul, making it pretty troublesome for Longhorns as Caldwell has four, Buck has three, and Ashley has three. Again, these Lady Longhorns are going to have to figure out how to play a little bit cleaner or, like I said, they're going to end up in real trouble. Another turnover going up. Good on the fast break. Yost turns it over as Bucks able to get it out of the air. One minute left in the second corner. Belt turns it over. Goes with it, goes up. No good on the basket. This is Emerson's first attempt at free throws this season. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. All right, let's see. Let's see if that practice has paid off. Trying to use the backboard is no good. Close on that one, but hopefully she's got a short memory and she can make she can put the next one in. Oof! Looks like we got a lane violation. Didn't matter though, as Belt missed it. Shot goes up. No good by by Jenny. A three pointer goes up. No good by Chloe Myers. Shooting two. 
All right, let's Mendes see Mendes' first free throws for the night. Has not scored once tonight. And hopefully she can just relax and let muscle memory take over and, uh, and put this one in for the Lady Longhorns. No get on the free throw either. Back with it, loses it. That is the end of the first half as the Lomega Raiders lead now 34 to 15 over the Lady Longhorns. And you know what, Sam? This this game is not over yet. The Lady Longhorns can come back out in the second half, and if they can play a clean basketball game and heat up some of those shooters, this could turn the other way around real quick. Yeah, so far, the leading scorer for the Longhorns has been Riley Buck, followed by Emerson Belt with six. And you know, if like I said, if Ashley Gomez can get heated up and she can come out and score the way that we've seen her scoring in the past, that could that could turn the tide of this game real quick. Yes, yeah, the only hard part about last year, though, is uh, what I remember was uh, Gomez towards the end of the season being a little bit streaky sometimes. Right. Very kind of wild card. One night, you know, leading scorer. Next night, not so much. Right. And, you know, the, the Lady Longhorns are coming off of a, of a victory last year against the, against the Lady Raiders at home. Um, we are on the road tonight. And, and what do you think that that – do you think that pressure played into it at all? Uh, maybe, probably a little bit. I mean, that was the first Lady Longhorns team to win against La Mega in, since 2007. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I just hope that these ladies can come out and play the season that they're going to play and not worry about, you know, doing – they can just play this season for this season rather than trying to, you know, live down the one before. You know, the Lady Longhorns hadn't been in the big house for a while, and they did make it last year. Yes. Um, they came up a little bit short, but, you know, I think that they they still have some momentum going into this season. And, you know, they'll come out and play their game. They seem to – maybe if they slow down a little bit and they might be able to string a few more plays together, a few more possessions together, and uh, put some more points on the board. Yeah, Longhorn slowing it down a little bit, not having – the same personnel as they did last year, like I said, the two Harveston twins allowed for very fast-paced offense. Yeah, those two those two were hard to compete against. Like I said, they knew what the other one was going to do. Plus, they were just excellent athletes. Yes. Uh, I believe that's it until half end of halftime as we have 6.15 left till the third quarter. We'll be back here in a little bit after a small commercial break. Term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and uh support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers talk about a win-win advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than ten dollars a game call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information
Surf your repair. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation, preparation. We are advocates for our client. We speak for them. So as a part of that advocacy, it involves hiring the best experts. It's doing the legal research. It's doing the medical research. That is advocacy behind the scenes. It's not just the bells and whistles in front of the jury. So you want to create your future, discover a path worth traveling down, find a career to get excited about. For decades, Career Tech has been training talented, skilled individuals, empowering them to step into a career that fuels not only their life, but the Oklahoma workforce. These individuals are the heartbeat of this state's economy. Individuals just like you. Create your future today at Oklahoma Career Tech. This back to school season, give your home the connection it deserves with Go Pioneer Fiber Internet. Experience the power of Wi Fi 6 technology for smoother streaming, gaming, and learning. And with the Go Pioneer Smart Wi Fi app, managing your home network is a breeze. Choose from multiple plans with symmetrical speeds for lightning fast uploads and downloads. Get your family school ready with Go Pioneer Fiber Internet. Sign up today at gopioneer.com. one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information.
Hello, as we are back for the second quarter of this ball game. with it, gets the buck. Caldwell now has it. Turnover, trying to get it to Brian. Going up, blocked, and no good for Snowden. Man gets buck, buck goes up. Good. There you go. Shot goes up, no good. Pass it up. No good on the shot attempt by Wheeler. Backman with it. Tries getting it Caldwell. Caldwell and able to get it. He's able to cover the loose ball though and is good on the two for her first score. And listen, and that's something that Joy does really well. She goes up strong. She comes down the floor strong. Like, she just very much has an attitude of, I will not be stopped. Buck turns it over, trying to get Caldwell. Stone goes, oh, goes up and is no good. Again, Emerson Belt underneath the basket. She was just really aggressive there. She did get the rebound. Wheeler goes up and is good on the fast break, too. Omega still in their press from the first quarter. Well, and the Lady Longhorns are closing that gap slowly. I just wonder if there's going to be enough game left for them to close it completely. Pass goes a little too high and is out of bounds. And for the Lady Longhorns, number 10, Squire. Presley Squires now comes in for Hadley Bryan of the Longhorns. Longhorns now call. Timeout with 4:11 left in the third quarter, down 39 to 22. Like I said, this is still a, this is still a winnable basketball game, Sam. But I think the Lady Longhorns just have to come out and you know do their jobs. They've got to stop turning over the ball. They've got to just slow down just a little bit and con and maybe take control of the game a little bit. Where you know Lomega's very much set the pace at this point. Yes, they're going to have to really do a good job, especially on defense, too, because, I mean, if Omega keeps scoring, it's going to be a, either right. the same gap. This could come off the rails very quickly. Well, that's one of the things that makes Omega basketball, Lomega girls basketball especially, such a, such a rough deal. The pace that they can play the game at is just not one that most people can match. Mez, Mez, 
Okay. That is good though for and her that, first score of the game. An impressive hook shot there on the move. Three-pointer is good again by Jenny Perrin. Their shot goes up and no good by Wheeler. Corner, no good by Ott. I think that was Snowden. Oh, there's a three pointer by Gomez. Good on the three by Gomez. Now has five points total for the game. Now three answered back once again by Panarin. And he now has nine points so far in three shots. All right, is there, are those Presley's first uh, points of the game? They are. All right. She's another uh, new addition to the Lady Longhorns basketball team, but uh, seems to be fitting in well. Mega passing it around. Good on the shot attempt by Yost. Giving it to Chloe Myers, and it is good. Once again, the Longhorns turn it over. Ott now, no good. Hadley Ott now gone cold uh, compared to her first quarter performance where she had where she had seven points. Eight points, sorry, eight points. Mez no good on the three. Mega brings it up the court. Ooh. All right, Jor Caldwell enters the game again, hopefully for good this time. Good hustle by the Raiders to get that ball back into play. Oh. Ashley tries to go up to the block, but it is called for the foul. Ashley Gomez, I believe. As she comes with three fouls, she was able to keep the second quarter a little cleaner than the first. But she's still gonna have to be careful. We still got quite a bit of basketball to play. Second free throw. Violation is. Foul is called, and it will be Longhorns ball still. Longhorns now down 49 to 29. Really tough gap to close. Yeah, that's going to be a rough one to close in, uh, with a minute and 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Raiders called on the travel. We'll go to the Longhorns now. 
Mez gives Caldwell back to Ashley. Buck gets it back to Caldwell. Brian for the two now, no good. Good on the shot by Myers. Joy Caldwell took a hard hit down there. Took a little bit of time to get up, but she did get up, block to half court, and leave the court on her own power. So that's a good sign. Longhorns now called timeout as they are down by, as they're down 51 to 29 now. It's going to be a tough gap to close for the Longhorns. Yeah, I think at this point, um, the Lady Long Horses, like I said, just need to play their game. They need to uh, focus on doing things right. And, you know, just like I said, it's – and not letting it come off the rails. Um, at this point, I think it's a, it's, it can be a mental um, a mental hurdle just as much as a basketball hurdle because, like, it's – like, that's a, that's a rough score to come back from. But to not spend the last part of this game playing defeated – Um, the Lady Longhorn coaching staff looks a little bit different this year than it did last year. you got some familiar faces in Matt Peck and Chris Combs, but we've got the addition of Pete Voth. Um, he is, uh, he's a new hire this year. He is the boys' baseball coach. Um, is his primary role, along with science teacher, but he is, uh, he is lending his talents to the Lady Longhorn basketball team. Uh, gives it to Ashley. Buck with it. Is fouled. Third person foul. Still fourth team foul. Buck now shooting free throws now. First one was no good. It's always a rough feeling when the first one didn't go in. Second one is good. She made it that one. She made that one, so. Going up, good on the shot by Snowden. Caldwell with it, gets Beckman. Beckman gets a butt, uh, Gomez. Three-pointer goes up by Buck, no good. Fifth personal foul. Mark Caldwell, second team foul. All right, and Joy Caldwell, that is her fifth personal foul. She has played her last minutes of basketball at Lomega this year. I guess her last minutes of basketball at Lomega, period. Yes, that would be correct.
And at the end of the third quarter, the Lomega Raiders are at 53 to 30 over the Dover Longhorns. As we wait for the... What do you think of the Longhorns so far tonight? You know what, I think they've done well with what they have. I think, like I said, you can't talk about Class B girls basketball without putting Lomega in that, in that conversation. Um, I think they've fought back quite well. Um, the school board may not, uh, may not reflect that, but... They never get. They have not given up yet. They ha, they have kept playing their game. They've kept, you know, kept the ball moving. They've done they've done the best they can. And so I think that, um, like I said, we may not come up with a win tonight, but I think there is definitely something to be said about about the effort put forth and how these girls are just uh, how these girls are playing the game. Yes, as we get started with the fourth now. Longhorns put in the lineup of Buck, Belt, Beckman, as well as Brian and Gomez. Beckman goes up to pull up shot, no good. And one for Snowden as they're able to get the, she's able to get the basket and we'll have a chance at a three point play. Good on the free throw as that will be a three point play. Well, I think the goal for the Lady Longhorns at this point is to play the game well with what they have left. Um, to not play defeated and to play to play smart and to just not 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 just give it up and let the and let the time run out. Good on the shot there. Three-pointer goes up. And that's the other thing about this Lomega Lady Raiders team is uh, they're very excellent at taking advantage of other teams' mistakes. They, uh, if you throw, if you lob a long pass, you know, one of them is probably going to be there to, to get that. And uh, they're just, they're very active basketball players, and they play at a pace that a lot of teams just can't keep up with. That foul was on Kinley Beckman. That is her first foul of the night, though. Squires now comes in for Brian. Good on the shot attempt. Lawson once again with a shot from the elbow. 
Flyers gets it to Bell. Bell goes up, no good on the layup. There we go. Kenley Beckman ends up kind of putting the putting the best face she can on that one and does come away with two. Shot attempt goes up and it's no good. Buck with an attempt. No good on the three. First personal foul on Ott. First team foul. Line change for the Lady Raiders. Man, shoots it good on and the It's two. good. Pass is too high as it will go out of bounds from be Longhorns basketball. <laughs> go up. It's hurt pretty bad, it seems like. A bit slow to get up on that one, but... So here at the free throw line, again, a somewhat... Con oh, just kidding. She's just standing at the free throw line. Beckman tries getting the ball back to one of her teammates, unable to, and it'll be jump ball. Will stay Longhorns ball though, as La Mega has an entire lineup change. Lady Longhorns basketball. Man for three, good on the free throw. No good on the shot there as Buck goes up for three, no good on the three by Buck. Lady Raiders basketball. Pointer, no good on the three. First was a foul on the right, third team foul. It goes up and it's good. Trying to get an open shot, Gomez with it. Tries getting it to Squires, unable to, and able to go out of bounds. We'll stay Longhorn the ball though. There's 3.10 left of the fourth quarter with the Longhorns bound 71 to 39.
Back with it. Tries getting it into Mez, but it's turned over. And one out, good. On the shot by Snowden. Beckman has it now. Stripped of the ball going up. Wheeler, no good. Stone with it is no good there as well. You know, Sam, I think it's safe to say that, uh, that I think the Lady Longhorns' best days are ahead of them. Um, I think more days in the gym, more days in practice are just going to make this team better. Just gonna weld them together as a as a unit, um, where each of them can kind of find their their place. Um, they're not gonna come up with a win tonight, but again, that's not for lack of trying. I've seen Lomega Dover scores that are way worse than that. Fourth personal foul on Pinneran. Um, and the time that I've been here, so to watch these ladies fight for for four quarters as hard as they did, um, like I said, they worked. Um, they played a lot better basketball than the scoreboard may have indicated. Yes, there will be another lineup change for Lomega. Brian, two-pointer goes up, no good. Mez gives it to Buck. Back with it. First personal foul on Jackie Pinnerin. Fourth team foul. Back man, no good on the two pointer. Shots going up with offensive rebounds, no good. Jim Ball's call and it will stay Lady Raiders ball as the Longhorns have a big lineup change now. Too many Lady Longhorns on the court. Yeah, not what you want to see. No. Three pointer. Yeah, we haven't played six on six basketball in Oklahoma in a long time. No, we haven't. It's been a very long time since that's happened. Fifty seconds left now in the game. Three pointer goes up. Good on the three. both now passing it in gives it to Purdue belt now for three no good three pointer goes up once again no good able to get the her own offensive rebound and three goes up at 25 no good 
Flyers with it. As the ball, that's ball game as the Lady Longhorns lose 76 to 39 to the Lady Raiders. A valiant effort, a valiant effort on the behalf of the Lady Longhorns, and uh, like I said, they uh, they hustled, they played four quarters of basketball, and uh, I think their best days are ahead of them, Sam. Yes, certainly. As we'll be we'll be back here. We'll be back here in a little bit. Uh, after some commercials, we'll be back here with the start of the boys' game. As the Dover Longhorns will try to get la revenge from last year's loss. And we'll be back here in a little bit. With the damage, so you don't have to replace the whole surface. We work with apartments and residential properties all over Oklahoma. Give us a call today to schedule your repair. 